Today, we're looking at Adobe Lightroom presets and how they can make repetitive tasks more efficient. Presets typically get a bad name in the landscape photography communities, but they have their place and can make your editing a little bit easier if used correctly. But first, what is a Lightroom preset? Lightroom presets are essentially a template of settings that can be applied in the develop module. Everything from exposure, contrast, tone curve, color grading, and more can be set in the preset. Then you can take that preset, that template, and apply all of those templated settings to your photo. When you're new to photo editing, presets seem like magic. You're probably still learning what sliders do what and possibly getting frustrated with your own edits. So you go out and you try a free preset, apply it to your photo, and you like its results better than your own. But presets have a downside. They are the same setting applied to each of your photos. So the results can vary greatly. If one photo is bright or one photo is dark, the results just simply aren't the same. On some photos, it looks okay. On others, not so much. And now you aren't even sure how to fix it. So ultimately, time spent learning how to edit your photos without global presets is a good thing and will serve you better in the long run. But there are times a Lightroom preset can help you. And today we're looking at how Lightroom presets can apply commonly used edits to a photo via masking. Basically a saved mask you can apply and then just as needed. Let's take a look. Okay, so here I am in Lightroom and I have a couple images we're gonna take a look at. And I'm really just gonna demonstrate three Lightroom presets that I sometimes use with my photography editing. But what I've got here is I got an image of Cucumber Falls in Pennsylvania, and I do have my normal edits done. I've done my basic exposure corrections. I've done my color corrections. I've got my color grading. I've got my lens corrections. I've done my sharpening and everything in here. Now the key with Lightroom presets as we talk about it is if you make a whole bunch of settings and apply the same set of settings to an image, they're not gonna always look good. But I have a couple masking things I tend to do on an image, not necessarily all three all the time, but usually one of them is gonna get used. And so I can use a Lightroom preset to sort of have a pre-built mask that I can just click on and bring in and adjust and modify as needed. So for this demo, we're gonna take a look at mid-tone contrast, the Orton effect, and the vignette, which you can see over here on the left side. This is where my presets are. I prefix them with JTP, Jeffrey Tadlock Photography, so that it's easy to filter and see just the ones I wanna see. Now I've talked about each one of these effects in more detail in previous videos, which I'll link to down in the description below. But these are effects that once I've done my edits, or in the case of mid-tone contrast, a lot of times this will come a little earlier on in the edit but I can come over here to this preset and apply just that effect as opposed to coming over to masks and creating it manually each time. So let's take a look real quick at the Orton effect, which is labeled over here as JTP Orton. So normally I would click my masks and I would come in in an Orton effect, like I said, talk about this in another video, but we'd come down to luminance range and I would start adjusting my luminance range and for the Orton effect, there's about six settings I wanna change. So if I'm doing some edits and I just sort of wanna jumpstart myself, there's a way to do that with the presets. Let's show you. Let's delete this mask. So instead of configuring that manually each time and setting my luminance range and then going in and making those adjustments, I have a Lightroom preset over here, JTP Orton. This is something I previously saved. I can just click on this, apply it to the image, and let's take a look at my masks. This by applying this preset, I've added a mask called Orton. And if I hide it, you can see not quite as much glow. The Orton effect is giving me that dreamy glow to the image. Bring it back and I get a little bit of glow in the water and in the highlights. So if we look here, click on the mask, what I've got is I have the luminance range. It comes in with the luminance range. I can change this. If I want more highlights in it, I can change what it's going to affect. So it is adjustable, modifiable, which is handy. I have the exposure boosted a bit. Contrast boosted a bit, highlights reduced a bit, and then down here I have the texture increased, clarity reduced, and dehaze reduced, all to sort of give it that glowy look. Like I dive into the Orton effect in another video linked in the description below. But this is super handy because if I'm working on an image that I want to apply the Orton effect to, I don't have to go through and repeat that set of steps every time. I can use a Lightroom preset to come in with a luminance range mask and those six settings that I tend to adjust. Now I can always tweak it, I can change it, I can adjust it. I have my same tools available to me. I can increase its strength. I can reduce its strength. Everything that I do normally is there. This is really just a head start, a jump in the right direction. So where I've talked about presets not always being the same on every photo, that's still true with this. This just gets me to a starting point. If this is a lower highlight scene and I need a little bit more intensity to get to draw it out, I can increase the intensity. I can in play with the individual sliders down here. I can increase exposure a little more 
or maybe I feel like the dehaze should be adjusted, but I can tweak it and change it in the whole bit. In my opinion, the key to doing this successfully with these Lightroom presets is to try to keep it a targeted approach. I'm not trying to merge a whole bunch of effects together because maybe not all effects will work on an image. But let me show you how I can add another effect to this. Let's add in a vignette. So I could come in here, I could use the vignette tool down here at the in Lightroom underneath effects. Talked about this in a previous video, which I'll link down below, how to use the vignette. I could use a radio mask, which is my preferred method. And I could come up here, do a new mask, do a radio gradient. But instead, since my vignette tends to be ballparkish of what I always want, and come over here, click vignette. And here we are, I get a vignette added to my image and it's customizable and flexible. So in this particular case, this is actually a little bit over applied for purpose of this demo. This is a preset I saved that is sort of over exaggerating the effect. So as you can see, if I turn it off, no vignette, if I turn it on, it sort of has an obvious vignette. But again, this is a customizable setup. So I can boost the exposure a little bit on that and straighten that vignette out. So again, super easy way to have the mask ability and sort of jumpstart, give you a nice baseline to work from. In this particular case, if I wanted to, I could move it. If I, if, you know, say my waterfall is off center, I can move it over here. So lots of flexibility, but it gives me that, I'm ready to apply that stylistic edit. So I go over to presets, click the one I want. It brings me into the baseline and I'm free to use the masking tools from there to make adjustments. In case of a vignette, it's not super hard to do this without a preset, but if you use something like the Orton effect where there's several sliders you're changing, it's sort of nice to be able to get that baseline and work from there. Okay. Let's flip over to this other image. I shared this in my vignetting video, but let's take a look at this. Let's take a look. Already edited image. There's no masks applied to this, but I want to show you how flexible this is. So if I want to apply a vignette to this, put on the vignette, take it off, on, off, on. So again, this is just a mask. And like I talked about in my vignetting video is I've darkened the sky here a little more than I want. I don't really want it to be that dark up there. And this is an example of a vignette doesn't always work the same on every image, but because this is a mask, I still have my flexibility to modify and change it. This just got me started. It's not necessarily where I'm gonna finish. So if I come in here, like I explained, we can click on this and I can subtract from this mask, take my brush, and we'll just subtract the vignette from the sky because I don't want it darkening those corners up in the sky. And just like that, I've fixed that vignette. So it sort of gives you that flexibility to make modifications just like you could with any mask. With the luminance range ones, the Orton effect, I could change the highlights it's affecting. Lots of flexibility, but a little bit of an efficiency jump start. So that's the vignette. Just wanted to show on this one because I think it's super obvious about how you can remove things from here because you don't want the sky affected. So let's bounce back to that first image. Let's go ahead and throw in this mid-tone contrast doesn't make a huge bit of difference on this one. It actually darkens this down a little bit too much in the shadows, in my opinion, so I can fix it. Let's expand this. I can just click on the mask and I can come down here and be like, you know, I don't really want to make the blacks that much darker. I can bring them up just a teeny bit or at least not reduce them and fix it from there. So now I've got three masks on this image. I've got the Orton effect, I've got the vignette. You can remove a mask. Say I didn't like this mid-tone contrast. I don't think it works for this image. I can just right click on it, delete just that one. Or maybe I decided I don't like any of these stylistic edits. It's time to get rid of them all. I can delete all masks and remove them. So again, just a really super flexible way to make repetitive tasks a little more efficient, whether it be a vignette, mid-tone contrast, uh, the Orton effect for me, or maybe there's some other things. Maybe you like to lift the blacks a lot, so you want a preset for that. But if you make these Lightroom presets a little more targeted to the adjustment that you really wanna make, you can sort of get this stacking effect with them and make them flexible for your image as opposed to like a global preset that's going in and not necessarily gonna be applied the same way across all images. So now you've seen the benefits of using these targeted Lightroom presets to make certain tasks in your editing a little easier. Let's take a look at this image. I'm gonna show you how to create one yourself. So I've got mine over here, but let's come over to the mask panel and let, we're gonna use the Orton effect because to me, that's one that has a lot of adjustments that's nice to not have to touch all six sliders every time and get you close to a baseline. So let's zip through that. Like I said, if you want more information on the Orton effect and how it works, I'm linking to the video down below. I encourage you to go take a look because I'm gonna move through this sort of quick. So we click the mask, 
We're gonna do a range, we're doing a luminance range. Orton effect, we want to affect the highlights, so we set it up in there. Orton effect, we typically will increase the exposure a little bit, increase the contrast a little bit, bring the highlights down so I'm not blowing anything out. Then we come down here to texture. We add texture because we still want our certain pieces to have some texture in there. Reduce our clarity. This gives a little bit of glow. Reduce our dehaze. Let's take a look. Let's turn it off. And you can see Orton effect, no Orton effect, mask turned off, Orton effect on. Can exaggerate a little bit for the video so you can see it. But what I've got now is I have this preset. Now, I recommend, I know we all get lazy and we don't name our mask layers. I'm guilty of it all the time. But if you're creating a preset, definitely name your mask layer. So I'm gonna rename this. We're gonna call it Orton Test. Say okay. And the reason is, is because when you click your preset, it's gonna come in with the mask name that you gave it when you saved it. So this makes it real easy. You're gonna click your preset. You're gonna end up with a mask. You know exactly which one was added, which one you might wanna tweak or modify or edit. So now you've got your Orton mask and now you need to save it. So to do that, you can come over here to the presets panel, click the plus button. You're gonna do create preset. Now this is key. What we're gonna do is we don't wanna save all of these settings. We just wanna save the Orton test. So I'm gonna click just the Orton test. And what that's gonna do is this preset is only going to save those settings. It's gonna save that mask and the slider adjustments I made. We're gonna name it. I tend to prefix them with my initials. That way, if I want to filter for my own custom presets, I can. So we do JTP, Orton, test, and I'm going to save it. And then over here in my preset, we've got an Orton test. This is the one I just created. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this, delete all masks. So now my image has no preset applied to it. I removed the masks. So if I want to apply my, my preset, say this is a new image, fresh edit, and come over here find my Orton test. When I highlight over it, it previews what it's gonna look like. I can click it. Here we are, it applied the Orton test. So that's how you can create your masks. So again, for something like the Orton effect where there is a lot of adjustments you make to get it, it can be pretty handy. And again, you can come in here, say I had too many highlights, I can adjust it after the fact. It's very flexible. It gets you to that baseline and gives you the flexibility and customization to tweak it and change it as you want, including removing it. If you decide you don't like it, you can just delete it. So I think you'll see these Lightroom presets used with this more targeted approach can be a great time saver and make you more efficient with your landscape photography editing. And there you have it. While presets in Lightroom tend to have a bad name, if you have certain specific edits you tend to do and can modularize them into specific tasks, you can use presets to more efficiently apply masks and edits to your photo to help improve your workflow. It can be a pretty handy little trick. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, and mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.